We go through all the studs and duds on today's show. Make sure you do not miss a minute. We're going to help you out, tell you whether we need to panic or not. Make sure you like the video, subscribe, and enjoy the episode. Summer is a time for excitement, so go ahead and switch things up with a new recipe from HelloFresh. With pre-measured ingredients and easy-to-follow directions, it's never been easier to try something new. Get up to 14 free meals, including free shipping, with code FOOTBALLERS14 at HelloFresh.com slash FOOTBALLERS14. We also want to thank Omaha Steaks for supporting the show. Look, what dad doesn't like to grill, entertain, and make memories with the family? I can personally tell you, when it's Omaha Steaks night, mm. it was just a little pep in my step. It was a good night. Put the burgers on. Oh, yes. Got some of those dogs. Put them mm -hmm. on the grill. Mm -hmm. Apple tartlets. <laughs> Let me say that again. <laughs> Apple tartlets. Uh, they've got all your fall grilling covered, which is when we can grill because it's not 9,000 degrees outside. Truth. Go to omahasteaks.com, type footballers in the search bar, and you can shop the Deluxe Grill Out Assortment. And that's all capitalized. Deluxe Grill Out Assortment. That's how important it is. Uh, 30 entrees, like bacon-wrapped filet mignons. Mm. Oh, my gosh. Mm. Uh, I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> Visit omahasteaks.com, keyword footballers. Save over 50% when you order the deluxe grill-out assortment, plus get 12 free Omaha Steaks burgers and keep making memories with the ones you love. That's omahasteaks.com, keyword footballers. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Monday, September 20th. Correct. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast. We're back again. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway. Yes, I am back again. Once again, asking for a Monday Night Miracle. Tilt watch. That I was denied of last week. Yeah, I mean, I think you're overstating it. I think you were overstating it both weeks. It's not a miracle. Last week would have been a the last week was a very large comeback. No, it was a miracle that you were beaten last week. <laughs> yeah, it was a massacre. It was a Monday night massacre last yes. week. But, I mean, you need 10 points from Jamal Williams tonight. In a half PPR. In so, a half PPR. Possible, but still, that like 10 22 is... 22 last week from him. Sure, but a lot of that was in the garbage area of the game. Just saying that it's this is definitely not a slam I know dunk. what you're doing, and this is fantasy. This is the psychology of fantasy players. If you're in it, you're not objective. And if you're in it, you're afraid of saying something that may ruin you. I'm and you don't want to concede that you have a good chance tonight. I have you're a calling chance. it a miracle. I have a chance, but I'm still bleeding, guys. <laughs> like I still I still have a giant gash in my side from last week. Yeah. What I, what what would you say, Andy? You're not the in odds? It. The odds that How he many, gets you, ten fantasy I need 10 points, points and a half. You need PPR. ten. Jamal Williams. Uh, in a half PPR, I would say your odds are eighty percent. Wow, wow! I yeah. put him. I put him at like a. I mean, this was the forty-five percent. I put him at fifty-five percent. Fifty-five. Sure, you do. <laughs> he came off the injury report. Swift stayed on it later. Yep. One of the top targeted backs in a half PPR. You talked about garbage time being the reason why. Yes, yes. Without I acknowledging that the Packers are heavy home favorites. Um, now. If you don't win, I don't want to be held responsible. But I will. Hold me 80% responsible. <laughs> uh, no, I mean a wild weekend once again. Yes. Just a crazy wild weekend with some surprises. Uh, I think on Wednesday this week we're going to hit a new segment. Oh, we're doing it? Yeah, I'm going to commit like to it. it right here. Okay. It was Mike's idea called Unsolved Mysteries. But there are – I mean, we're two weeks into the year – and making conclusions around what's happened, like Carolina's defense. Yes. Are they good? But, I don't – I think they might be. Or the yeah. Saints offense or the Denver Broncos offense. I mean, there are a lot of questions. Yes. So we'll do some unsolved mysteries this week. 
after we have Monday Night Football play out and find out if Mike's still a part of the show. But it is Monday, and uh, <laughs> it's getting sophisticated. We have some reactions from the weekend, uh, only delivered in the most sophisticated manner. <laughs> it is Monday, pun day. <laughs> yeah. We have the Poo Orleans Saints. Oh, <laughs> Cooper couple touchdowns. Oh, couple touchdowns. The best part of waking up is starting Cooper Cup. Oh, Cooper man. Cup of coffee. <laughs> Tyleria <laughs> Higby. That's an all-timer. <laughs> yeah, that one's good. Oh. Elijah Fizzle or Elijah Misfire? Yes. Oh, failure to launch. Uh, D.A. Moore. Oh, he's good. <laughs> yes, and Tony Holland. <laughs> or Michael Pittman. Oh, yes. They got Dak Mascot. Mm, and crap. Prescott. Crap Prescott. <laughs> just right there. Oh, Scrap no. Prescott. Just like A.J. Brown pants. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Robbie <laughs> Blanderson. And control, chenault, delete. <laughs> Did you see you shall not score? You yes, shall not. Yes. Uh, Scorderell Patterson. <laughs> Ooh. And, of course, lamest Winston. Mm. I'm sure he's never heard that. <laughs> he's heard it so much. <laughs> You can call me lamest. Oh, that's uh, what my mom calls me. <laughs> oh man, what a weekend! Lots of reactions, and we have the stud muffins, the pooped in the big boy pants today. So many things to talk about, including injuries. You know, I couldn't help but think of the injury to Carson Wentz when Michael Pittman yes had a nice week. Join the foot dot com if you want to become a part of our fantasy football community. Over 20,000 strong. You get access to an extra show, premium perks, bonus episodes, including the injury blitz. It is uh, where you want to spend your season as part of the community, the Foot Clan, at jointhefoot.com. Twitter, at the FF Ballers. You guys want to talk some news? Mm -hmm. Yes, please. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. Although most of the news is just bad. It's all just Usually like, on Monday it is. Yeah. Do you want to spin it all positive for us? Let's do that. Let's do that. Um, okay, Dalvin Cook limped off the field in the fourth quarter, but managed to return for the final drive. There's no problem. He limps off all the time. He's always back. He's ready. He also did this multiple times in the game. A regular Paul Pierce. Yes. Shady McCoy. Daryl Henderson exited with a rib injury. And Sony Michelle was really, I don't know how long I can keep this up, guys. <laughs> Sony Michelle uh, looked good in uh, replacement, and it will. I, I, Henderson should play. He's got a rib injury, maybe a flak jacket, maybe a week off. Yeah, yeah, that'll be interesting. I, I wonder if there's a week off if Sony, you know, makes a case. He could. Henderson looked pretty oh, he good did to me. Look great. Would you like some? Pull your hair out news. Deontay Johnson hey. suffered a knee injury on the last play of the game. Um, there is concern here from Matthew Betts, our injury expert. MRI will tell the story. Uh, it was knee. It was a knee injury. I know that. I saw a good Monday pun day with uh, Deion takes all the targets, Johnson. Oh. oh. And, um, he yeah, does. He, that was his ninth catch of the day that he got hurt on. Right. Uh, so if, if this is a multi-week absence, um, would you be – Maybe kicking the tires on an early before, maybe before the news is confirmed. James kicking Washington? the tires on no on a Juju or a Cl uh, or a, a Chase Claypool. Claypool. Um, trade wise, yeah, I'm not concerned about a long term injury right now, but you can kick them. I mean, you're going to get Claypool at a discount. Here's a tire. Let's kick the, it. <laughs> the offense doesn't look good. Yeah, the problem the is big looks ben. bad. Yes, it does. Um, the 49ers are like. Baltimore, hold my beer. It's unbelievable. Trey Sermon played one snap and got a concussion. Uh, Eli Missile, mm. right shoulder injury. However, this one is not that concerning. He's going to have an MRI. Kyle Shanahan said he's not that concerned because he came back in the game. Are you concerned that he was bad? I'm not. I'm not concerned that he was bad. I mean, I I have him in a lot of places. But Seventeen he, carries, forty two yards. That's two and a half yards per. The carry. entire team ran for three point one a carry. It was an awful day for the offense. It okay. was. It was a really and he, bad. And he day had a for touchdown callback. That's what I was going to bring up. He was 
he was in for the end zone, and it seemed like he had a fine fantasy day, and that was taken away. And I mean, it's, it's so funny how a touchdown can make all the difference. The exact same yards, the exact same rushing attempts, receptions. You give him that touchdown, and you were happy. And he left the field for a few drives. So when you look at eight fantasy points, whatever it is, and a half point, okay. you missed a touchdown, you missed multiple drives, come back in. Jamichael Hasty. I mean, we couldn't, we couldn't swivel our head around fast enough to t- – to decide who the next man up would be at any given moment. It was like I added Jamichael Hasty to our league of record, my, my league of record team before the game. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, he's the guy now. Oh, oh, he's hurt. Yes. And so you had Trenton Cannon played. He did. And uh, he had just been picked up from the other running back devoid team, the Ravens. So He started the, uh, the day with more career yards than he finished with, though. Oh, good, good. <laughs> But uh, ankle injury awaiting details on Hasty. The whole backfield you got to keep an eye on. Carry on, Johnson. Please put Jeff Wilson Jr. on your IR if he's if you have a spot. Yeah. Put him there like that. and just hold him. I like it. He has the most, uh, I would say, built up trust with Kyle Shanahan of any of these backs. Sermon, Mitchell, Hasty. It'll be Wilson if if he's got the if he's healthy. Yeah, like it, if Mitchell. Let's see if you agree with me. If yeah. Mitchell is healthy when my name is Jeff comes back, whose job do you think it is? I pro- On a weekly basis, I'd rather start Jeff probably. Yeah, I, yeah, I think I would I. rather start him, but I, I would anticipate that it's a, a two-back yes. rotation. Amari Cooper left the field. Final drive. Managed to make a return. Hitting the ribs. Jarvis Landry, knee MCL sprain in the first quarter. Yeah, right at the very beginning of the game. Unfortunate. Yeah. That sucks. I mean, nothing you Hopefully can do about it's it. It's probably one that misses a couple of weeks. Yeah. It could be more. Yeah, it makes Odell Beckham getting back on the field more important for the Browns. Wow. I've almost discounted using him in fantasy football this year. That's Odell? But, yeah, like I just happened to have him in a couple leagues. I got him in a trade, and I've just kind of conceded he's not going to be viable or relevant for fantasy. But um, Donovan, Donovan Poo Poo Jones and <laughs> Anthony Schwartz is as big as mine. They put up like a combined one fantasy point. The the offense had Baker get hurt. I don't know. Odell yes. could have some relevance if Jarvis misses time. We had quarterbacks going down all over the field. Yes. Literally, I mean, Tua, rib injury, x-rays are negative for a fracture. There'll be an MRI. Bruised ribs is the diagnosis right now. Jalen Waddle was having a game, and then Tua left, and it was over. He never picked up another yard. Yeah, I, I – I mean, it was really, really bad when Jacoby Brissett got in. What the final score of that game was like thirty-four to nothing or something. Um, so they obviously need Tua. I would be hesitant to expect Tua to come back. Like he might play this next week. If he does, I cannot imagine that he will just be the same. And maybe this is projecting of my own injury from a a, a lake <laughs> incident on a speedboat. But bruised ribs. They're no joke. Um, I mean, it was hard to play foosball. So go out there and go out there and be. I know you're a little tougher. That is factual, by the way. (laughs) Now he tried. Jason tried, and he would cry out in pain. I mean, I played through the pain, but I wasn't as good. No, you were like two. You did eventually sit out for a couple days. Yeah, two was two was. You know, it's not not going to be a hundred percent. Me, football, we're the same. Foosball. They're very similar. It's just one letter. Yeah. yeah. I'm like two of them in, yeah. and he's two of <laughs> Carson Wentz dealing with injuries to both ankles. Oh, come on. No, one it, isn't enough. No, and this could be uh, – there's an MRI today. We'll monitor that. Similarly, you're not going to have confidence starting anybody in the receiving game until Jacob Eason, like, proves it to you if he's the starter. Why did – why does Carson Wentz destroy offensive lines? I don't understand. Yeah, like, he was running around like crazy for his life, and and the part of the narrative. No one wants to protect in the him? off season was coming in. <laughs> well, let's see if Carson Wentz is better now that he's got a good off. I mean, the yes. the Colts are a great offensive line. The off season, this is one of the best offensive lines. Now they were missing their left tackle, but they got him back. And then it, every time I watched Carson Wentz, it was just it was him with all the defenders in his face. It's like, I, I don't get it. I don't get why all of a sudden this offensive line looks horrific just because Wentz is behind it. I, I saw the same thing. I don't know why. Andy Dalton, knee injury in the first half. This is a big one. 
Um, from what I saw this morning, ACL not injured, MCL not injured. They're looking at bone bruise for Andy Dalton. Right, but this this is it. It's done. It's Fields. It's ju Justin Fields will start next week, and I, even for the budget magician, I don't see a world where if Justin Fields goes out there and he's your starter for one or even two weeks while Andy Dalton is still hurt, how do you possibly go back? I do. I see a path. Really? I know, I'm a huge Justin Fields fan, but he looked okay. Sure, but he, like he's the future. And I, if he has a couple, if Andy Dalton, if you have the excuse, like you can't pull Dalton for performance and then put him back in, but you can put him back in if your rookie struggles and he was injured. Yeah, it's just that, a matter. That happens. It's a matter of how Fields performs. Exactly. And this first week, assuming that Fields is starting this week, which I, I at at this point that is my assumption, that's going to be against the the Browns, and that's not a gimme matchup. So if he goes out, shows well, wins that game. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be, you know, it, it could be a Justin Herbert situation last year where they weren't expecting to start him, but he was too good, and he won the job. He was 6 for 13 in relief of Dalton. Had one of the worst interceptions I've yeah. seen in a while. Yeah, he was 10 for 31 on the ground. So, um, regardless of what the narrative turns into. You shocked by that number, Jason? I, if you 10 had attempts. 10 attempts, I would expect a lot more yes. than 31 yards from Certainly. him. But uh, regardless of, of what happens down the line, if he plays, he is interesting for fantasy because yes. of the, the rushing prowess and, and the, what that brings to the table. I think somebody – who was it? Uh, oh, Jalen Hurts didn't throw a touchdown pass. He had, yeah. tw he had 22 fantasy points. So uh, Tyrod Taylor exited with a hamstring strain because it's week two of the National Football League. He was – playing tremendously as well so this, and this I was, sucks man i was excited to see like if you tell me the texans are on thursday i needed to find some reasons to be excited right. and watching tyrod was going to be one of them yeah, he's played well are they allowed to change it change what the just who's playing on thursday just completely oh uh, you should have seen this coming before the season this is <laughs> right? on them this is this is not hard to predict that <laughs> this is not going to be a game who are they playing watch. carolina Okay, so you well, got some CMC, and Carolina can go to three and zero. Well, I mean, look, <sighs> before <laughs> murder. murder, before when they were planning this schedule out, I think the NFL thought that it would be a different starting quarterback for the Houston Texans, different than Davis Mills, and different than Tyrod Taylor. Yeah, I know. I uh, he has been ruled out already in that game. Watson, yes. yes. Oh no, <laughs> yes, yes is the answer. But I actually meant Tyrod. They've both been ruled out. Yeah. Which is another way of saying Davis Mills has been ruled in. All right. Let's, um, let's go, Mills. General. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, the general. <laughs> go get him. Now we have a reason to watch this Save game. your box tops, everybody. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. The general Mills. Save your box tops. All right. Nico Collins, shoulder injury. Texans rookie wide receiver. Russell Gage exited with an ankle injury. It says he did not return. That's a lie. He did return. Did he? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he did. Uh, LaVisca but, but did he? <laughs> yeah, he caught a pass when he came back in. <laughs> LaVisca Chenault exited with a shoulder injury. This is uh, something to monitor because you need – maybe you need a point of clarity there for who to start at the wide receiver position for Jacksonville and one less body would make it easier. It was obviously the Marvin Jones show in this one. Yes, it was. Uh, James O'Shaughnessy exited with an angle injury, so if you took a desperation shot on him, that was some bad luck. And then Jamal Williams off the injury report. Swift is still listed as questionable. Both will play. And we'll have a Monday night madness situation for Mike, the fantasy hitman. <sighs> Please, Jamal. Please. That was today's. He'll do it. He'll do it. He'll do it. And if he doesn't, then you'll be sad. You told, you told <laughs> us, us mid-game yesterday that the Cardinals were going to win. I did. And you said it with confidence. Yeah. And then clearly they just took control of the game. And you were right. <laughs> and so um, I'm telling you, he's you, he's got you. Yeah. You uh, you were dead on with that. I don't even think, were you still here, Jason, when Mike had thrown down? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You had also put a, a quick mid-game bet on yep. the Titans to win. And right you got, before the tying touchdown, yes. Yeah, you got like plus 150 on that. And yeah, then he won awesome. that bet. Ooh. So he's on a hot streak. Hot streak. Uh, yeah, thank you. 
That was today's news and notes brought to you by Sleeper, the leader in breaking news alerts. If you don't have Sleeper on your phone, you are actually like your odds of being successful in fantasy are at negative 110. Yes, they they go so, down. You got to be able to move quickly. Wait, yeah, your odds of being successful at fantasy would be plus, plus one ten. Okay. Yeah, but that sounds bad because it sounds like a good thing, but that's a bad thing. <laughs> the odds would be against you. Is yes, what I'm that saying. is correct. Okay. Like it helps you. It does. Yeah. Indeed. Uh, professional. Da- download Sleeper and join their b- professional first time better. <laughs> Arizona just legalized. <laughs> um, and I knew instantly that I would be corrected and just tried to press forward. Uh, Not okay. on this show. Get sleeper. We got studs coming up. Well, I'm going to parlay that into oh, thanking oh. today's <laughs> sponsor, IP Vanish. Uh, thank you for sponsoring today's show. IP Vanish is a virtual IP Vanish. Did I say Vanish? Vanish. Yes. Vanish. Whatever. IP Vanish. They're a virtual private a network. French city. A VPN for short. And a VPN is a super important tool. It helps protect your safety on the internet. You can use it on a computer, a tablet, a phone, a fire stick when you're streaming media. If you're connected to the internet, you need to protect yourself. You need to protect your data. It's important because what you're doing on the internet is no one else's business but yours. And our listeners of the show right now, IP Vanish is offering an incredible 65% off their annual plan. That's six months free. If you're on any sort of public Wi-Fi, Anyone with the know-how can see exactly what you are doing. And they have a 24-7 support available by email, chat, telephone. Go to ipvanish.com slash footballers. Claim that 65% savings. Their annual plan is just $44.99 for the first year with our exclusive discount. This is the time to sign up with our discount and their current promotional offerings. You can get a VPN for 65% off. IP Vanish is the best of the best, even rated 4.7 out of 5 on Trustpilot with more than 6,000 reviews. Remember, it's ipvanish.com slash footballers to get the deal and start protecting yourself online. And Foot Clan, let's say you're going to Venice. <laughs> Uh, Italy. Italy. Um, Italy. And you want to look good and you're losing your hair. It, look, don't worry about it. More than 50 million men in the U.S. suffer from male pattern baldness. Two out of every three men will experience it by the time they are 35 in America. So, look, there are only two FDA-approved medications that can prevent hair loss. And Keeps offers both of them. Keeps has a simple, stress-free way to keep your hair Convenient virtual doctor com- consultations, medications delivered straight to your door every three months. You don't have to leave your home, and it's low cost. Treatments start at just $10 a month, and Keeps offers generic versions. There's discreet packaging. You don't need to feel ashamed. They have more five-star reviews than any of its competitors, and prevention is key. Treatments could take four to six months to see results, so act fast. If you're ready to take action, prevent your hair loss, go to Keeps.com slash footballers to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's Keeps.com slash footballers to get that first month free. K-E-E-P-S dot com slash footballers. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. I'm going to be honest with you. General Mills has made Thursday Night Football <laughs> just a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Hope he does well or we'll have to pour one out. Um, what was the uh, – I'm trying to think of the other backup quarterback that we had a good nickname for. It's not Arthur. I've got a plan. Who am I thinking of? I don't know. Oh, oh, Driscoll. Driscoll. That's what it was. Oh, the old Driscoll boys. <laughs> yeah. I feel like Davis might fit the same category. Yeah. All right. This week's fantasy stud muffins. Can you stop Kyler Murray? Holy crap, man. No, you can't. One of the reasons why I think both of you had tremendous confidence in him is your number one overall draft quarterback. Mm-hmm. Not only the 13 games he already was that last year, yep. but the fact that this team has taken the – weaponry and upgraded it across the board you have the ever impressive rondale moore you have christian kirk healthy from the slot superstar aj green aj green (laughs) the call of calls aj green helps the offense um and then you had you had max williams with a career day look kyler was four he went for 400 and then he had another one on the ground i mean he's on he's got the jacksonville jaguars next week Mm. Um, he has now moved into a tie with Brady for second in MVP with uh, Mahomes odds on favorite Lamar Jackson last night was impressive he wanted that game and he got it uh, 239 and one couple of picks did it feel like at the beginning of the game though that you're like 
Oh man, that he didn't want. It. This is not going to go well for Lamar. Yeah, because he threw two picks. One was a pick six, and he looked. He looked awful, and then he he literally willed his team to a victory. He was a decent quarterback, and a, and I'm just saying statistically, a decent quarterback performance right. and a great running back performance. If you got 16 carries, 107 rushing yards, and two rushing touchdowns from your running back, you, yes. you are thrilled, and that's what you got from your quarterback. Outstanding. Tom Brady has oh. nine touchdowns in two games. Goodness gracious. Um, you should – Start him in fantasy football every week, uh, including next week against the Rams, which yes. will be a tough matchup. Yeah, I don't know how you move away. 14 touchdown passes. This is insane. He's 14 touchdown passes away from throwing more touchdowns in his 40s than his 20s. <laughs> wow. I mean, that is unbelievable. And he's – you notice he's everywhere now and everybody likes him? Oh, because he's so – look – He's likable. He's he, under the cl uh, the cloud of of New England. It's annoying. You, you didn't want to root for Tom Brady on the Patriots because <laughs> no. they, you know, they were uh, keeping the entire league down for so long. They were the uh, but, enemy. But not only did he move, but he changed personalities. <laughs> like he is now on social media being funny, legitimately funny, not like uh, cringy. Uh, he's he's just he a great He does a subway commercial and he doesn't eat bread. <laughs> the the first time I saw that commercial come on in real it's you know cuz it's the joke of it's the clone all of a sudden it it's a subway commercial I'm like what is going on? I know. Tom Brady is legendary that he does not eat br Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay, Tom. It was good. <laughs> well done. Daniel Jones had a great fantasy week, 9 for 95 and a touchdown. We talked about that game. Kirk Cousins a shocking performance. Come on, man. Given what you saw from Arizona in week one, a lot of fears playing against that defensive line, but they had a game plan. This is what we talked about. It's like you saw week one what the Cardinals did to the Titans, and so the, the Vikings saw that, and they got the ball out quick most of the game, and the Cardinals couldn't stop, stop Dalvin Cook. But a lot of this was kind of a broken play right in the beginning uh, to K.J. Osborne. Yeah. Most, most of the yardage, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, Mahomes, he's great. He is. Uh, Derek Carr. Send in the car. Send in the car. 382 and two, no um, interceptions. Dude. 28 for 37 and destroyed Pittsburgh and Pittsburgh. Dude, Derek Carr. <laughs> Against Pittsburgh. Oh. R E S P E C T. Yeah, it's. Uh... We're two weeks in, but I, yes, yes, you definitely have we, to move. Is this, the, but does we were joking. Respect. They're just going to lose to like the worst team. Doesn't this feel like the trap? Like two is not playing. Two is not going to play. Brissett's going to play, and they're just going to get dominated because they shouldn't. Because they oh should right, not. Brissett shouldn't beat the Raiders. And yes, you're right. I mean, the Raiders. This game's more legit. important than the Pittsburgh Baltimore game. Yes, you 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 were talking, Andy, like b before the Steelers game. You believe that the that the Raiders are legit and. And they, there's no reason on paper. You hear that, Raiders to, fans? <laughs> to doubt them at all. Meet me on social media. Their defense looks good. Their offense looks good. They they appear to be a legitimate team. But last year, this happened where they had a couple game stretch. You know, they beat the Chiefs, and then they turn around and just lay an egg as soon as you start believing. So they don't have any layups for a while. Miami Chargers, Bears, Broncos. Yeah, maybe are, maybe they just don't need that easy matchup. If you get them middle middle of the road, they'll be all right. Yeah, unless Brissett's playing. Two top ten performances for Derek Carr to start the year against Baltimore Pittsburgh. So oh my, um, we'll find out what's going on, and uh, you guys can give John Gruden a bunch of credit in the future. You looking forward to that? Oh, like I've talked about him on Sunday Live. That I love John Gruden. The fact that we had Josh Jacobs be ruled out so early, and then and then it's like okay. You gave a backup running back ten plus million dollars for this scenario, and he said, "Nay, <laughs> <laughs> we brought in Peyton Barber from, from a practice squad." Who, by the way, I don't know if you saw the full quote. He was dapping up Peyton Barber uh, before the game for his time in Tampa. Mm -hmm. Like, does Gruden even know there was an there was, there was another else. team in between? <laughs> Uh, no, he probably doesn't. What? What? Just watch the Tampa tape. He's like, I like he, this guy, man. He was learning from Shanahan. He's like, yeah. <laughs> Trey Sermon, no. Eli Missile, yeah. Russell Wilson had a great week, three forty-three and two. 
But they gave that game away at the end, and uh, Cardinal fans are fine with that. Yep. Uh, running back studs. Have you heard of Derrick Henry? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, yeah he's, he's he's back, baby. Just don't watch the first half. If, if you've got Derrick Henry on your roster, just tune in at halftime because he is such a – like, as the season goes on, as the game goes on, it, he just gets better and better. It's it's like a, a snowball rolling downhill. At the bottom, it's gigantic. Well, That's a great analogy for the Yeti. Yes. I mean, you tried tackling a, dude, a snowball. A, that guy, a guy of his size. But the bigger news was they, had to, they got into a two-minute drill, and Derrick Henry was, like, getting some check downs, man. Six, Six targets. Oh, my goodness. Hey, look, Tennessee. If Derrick Henry – adds pass catch like week one week two it looks yeah. like it's legit it looks like he is a pass catching back as well he will straight up win people their leagues if that continues I was I mean last week we were talking about go get Derrick Henry because mm -hmm. in a game that they were absolutely dominated by Arizona he had 17 carries and four catches in this game he had 41 opportunities and you took your advice and you 41 went, you, you traded for him and you were happy I'm very very happy yeah. I am not. Because uh, <laughs> we are in the same We're division. division mates. Let's recycle that division. Um, Christian McCaffrey is bad game proof. We know that. Yep. He had a good game. 24 for 72 and a touchdown. He left briefly, freaked everyone out when you saw Chuba for a couple drives. But 30 more opportunities for McCaffrey and the 2-0 and Panthers. Let's talk about maybe the topic on yes. the top of most people's minds. Tony Pollard, Ezekiel Elliott. Pollard was 13 for 109 and a touchdown, had three targets, three for 31. Zeke was 16 for 71 and a touchdown, two targets, two for 26. So Zeke had a great game. Yeah, Zeke was – he's currently the number six overall running back on the week. Right. So if you had him, you like his fantasy output, you're happy with his performance, but you feel bad because it could have been better and because he didn't even have the best uh, running back game on that roster. Are you concerned – no, not really. I mean, I, I'm not really concerned. I, I guess you could you could do the fantasy football taboo thing and start with your conclusion and then justify it with what happened on the field. Like, my brain goes to, they ran a trick play with Tony Pollard to get him that touchdown, and Zeke could was on the goal line. Like, Zeke could have had two touchdowns right, right there. And I think Tony Pollard has proved that he belongs in the NFL and deserves touches. And he's the kind of player that does a lot with a little touch wise. Um, I'm not that concerned about Zeke. This was a game where Pollard had the more impressive stat line on a yards per carry level. He had a couple of huge plays. He gets to the edge faster. He's more explosive. Yes. When you watch these guys on the field, you, you know, who has, more speed exactly. and, and is making more breakaway plays. I think it might get to a point where you can confidently play Tony Pollard if he continues possible. to get these touches. Uh, 13 carries to Zeke 16. That's the concern is like th fair. that's a lot of, of rushing attempts that are being taken away from Zeke. But 71% of snaps were Ezekiel Elliott. 34% of the snaps were Tony Pollard. That matters. That matters a lot. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the, the snaps – a crazy amount of work for Tony Pollard when he was actually out there. The fact that he had the, the 16 opportunities when he played on under 40% of the snaps. I'm still in on Zeke. Like, I think he's still a, a solid running back one for your team. The targets are the more concerning port, uh, part for Zeke. That He's out there the whole time. And you know he's running routes, and just like he in week one, you know he had to he had to pass block a lot, but he still ran a lot of routes in week one, and wasn't a focal point of the of the passing game. So that's disappointing to see him only with two targets this week. Yeah, I mean Dak had one of the worst fantasy outputs yeah, in a was... win that you could ever have. Um, Cordero Patterson plays running back uh, seven <laughs> for eleven and a touchdown. Got the goal line work on that one. And then six targets for five fifty eight and a touchdown. Yeah, he. I mean, he only landed here because of the two touchdowns. But he's an interesting name moving forward for fantasy to see what this evolves into. Yeah, it's a combination of the two touchdowns along with how he looks compared to his backfield mate Mike Davis. And we're going to talk about 
Cordero tomorrow in the smoke fire uh, segment. Mike is looking for cards because the Bears PR team just came into the media room to deliver a message from Matt Nagy, which says Andy Dalton is the yeah! team. Is the team starting? Oh, I didn't get very much separation there. Uh, no, you just threw yeah! like a, a lot of cards around. Andy Dalton is the team starting quarterback when he's healthy, which you have the luxury of doing. Get out of here, Matt Nagy. You have the I mean. It's up to Fields. It's you, up to Fields to take I, I the job. You have every opportunity to take it right now. If I don't have a single problem with Nagy doing that, I think if I was the head coach, I would do that because it's the only way I can reel it back if Fields doesn't play well, is that it was always the plan. If Fields doesn't play well, I've got to be able to I've got to be able to not break his confidence and go and go back to Dalton while he continues to learn behind okay, the well, scenes. Okay, well now the flip side of that is Justin Fields plays well, and you have confidently told your team that Andy Dalton is the starter. Oh, if Fields is playing well, you're winning ball games. The whole team wants Fields, and they don't it's care. easy. They don't that, care. That's easy. But I mean, but this is the point. Justin Fields play well. This is your shot. Take it. Take it. From the 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 cold, probably Red moist hands. grip of Matt Nagy, and and take oh your those shot. hands are clammy. Oh yeah, real real <laughs> clammy hands. Wait, doesn't he take the job from Andy? No, not at all. This is he's taking the job. You pry it from Nagy. Yeah, Nagy's not the quarterback. That's not no, how it works. but he's who's doling out the job. You got to take the job out of the hands of. But Nagy. he's alive. Nagy's oh yes, alive. Nagy's alive. Just very cold, clammy, and clammy hands. Because <laughs> when he performs on stage, gets real clammy. Mm -hmm. He's nervous. He's, he's, he's a he's, he's a budget. Yeah. Magician. Hey, we had uh, we had a remedy to a problem. Austin Eckler had nine targets. Guess what? He caught all of them. Nine for sixty one. Right. He also was nine for fifty four on the ground. Looked great. Played seventy eight percent of the first half snaps. Had a helmet to helmet hit. Might have cost him some snaps in the second half. Yeah, I mean, Eckler's great, and mm -hmm. I don't think anyone was concerned with the fact that he had zero targets week one. We've seen him play with Justin Herbert, and we've seen him play for years. You throw the ball to Austin Eckler. Do you trade Najee Harris coming off of a 15-touch mm. uh, performance where he was 10 for 38 on the ground behind a battle line, 5 for 43 through the air, got it, had a touchdown, so you love to see that. But, you know, the matchup looked good. Yeah. And he didn't cross 40 yards it on the ground. It depends on who you're trading him for. Like, for instance, Austin Eckler, a, a player that you're confident in and you know is great. I, I'm fine doing that. I'm not trading Najee uh, away to capitalize because he's been, uh, you know, inefficient and below hope and expectations for the first two weeks. Because you could have one of two situations here, right? Like Clyde Edwards Alaire uh, last year came out, didn't look anything special, and then continued that. You have Jonathan Taylor last year come out, didn't look any people were dropping Jonathan Taylor at, at the yeah, mid season point, and people were grabbing him off of waivers. And he's a rookie. It sometimes it takes a little bit of time to to figure out the speed of the NFL and and so I'm I am willing to capitalize on the touchdown if you can trade up at running back. You know, I would trade Najee for Mixon. I would trade Najee for Eckler. I would trade, you know, but I'm not uh, I'm not just trying to capitalize on a week and get yeah. rid of him. Yeah, I think people want to hear that perspective. Five targets. That, that like that's, that's what nice. I, that's what I think needs to be focused on. The the ten for thirty eight it, that that part sucks, but five targets. James that, Conner's looking over there. He's going. I could get five for thirty eight. Yeah, yeah but, or I mean, uh, if Deontay misses time, you're talking about those short yes, you are. targets that that could go Najee's way. Oh man, Juju is going to catch so many. Passes. Yes, Juju is so going many. to be a PPR machine for the next month. Hey, uh, nine for one sixty three and two. Yeah. That is that is Cooper Cup stat it's, line. It's the Cooper Cup of Coffee. Cooper Cup of Coffee. Say it Jason with us. start of the week finished number one overall. So. That 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 works. Tyler Lockett, eleven targets, eight for one seventy eight and a oh, touchdown. Oh brother. Um Tyler Lockett is somehow I mean, it's not just him. It was it's Freddie Swain as well. They just had they use like voodoo on the on the safeties or something. Like they get perplexed watching Russell roll left or I don't know. He gets so many open looks down the field that what a start to the year for Tyler Lockett. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and so you're telling me that Tyler Lockett, he's kind of got to be the overall number one guy right now, right? I would assume so based on two so weeks. So he is now going to be matched up against a secondary that just gave up 
four hundred passing yards and three passing touchdowns. Well, and that, in that's the Minnesota a, Vikings, and that could be the uh, the Metcalf breakout game too, because both guys had eleven targets in this one. Lockett is just it's on fire right on now. On fire, yeah. The, the The reason why I even breathed AJ Green's name out loud was the Minnesota secondary, right? And Brashad Breland. So see who he's matched up against. Terry McLaurin, fourteen targets from Thursday night was great. Mike Evans, doing Mike Evans things. Two touchdowns, five for 75. There's a two-thirds rule in Tampa Bay. Mm -hmm. That two-thirds are good? Yeah. Yeah, only one catch for Antonio Brown in this yep. one. And don't worry about it. Don't. I w I'm not going to think I need to bench him. You, you, you start your Tampa Bay. Look, Tyreek Hill did nothing. Right. He's great. He's – all wide receivers have bad games because they don't get to guarantee touches. Um, you, you just start all your Buccaneers wide receivers and, and hope that this week is, you know, that it favors you. Rondale Moore, eight targets, seven for 114 and a touchdown. Man. Rondale Moore, if you didn't watch the game, like the stat line almost betrays how good he was. Correct. He was better than seven for 114 and one. He made this ridiculous play where he should have run out of bounds before the half. Yes. He cut in. Gained 10 yards, cut back out of bounds with the second left. It's the rookie wide receiver for the Arizona Cardinals. And gave Matt Prater a shot at a 62-yard field goal that he made, and the Cardinals won by a point. Yes. So This was a stash candidate from week one for us because he, he had a pretty good week one game, but he only ran 14 routes. He was on the field a lot. He was involved. He was targeted. This is a player that when he's on the field, he is involved, and he has the ability to break a, a long play at, at any moment. Can I give my kind of cardinal breakdown and then wrap in my A.J. Green stuff sure, real sure. quick? I'll allow it. Uh, the Cardinals, uh, by the way, A.J. Green, uh, you, if you haven't heard of him, he's the fourth most athletic receiver for the Arizona Cardinals, <laughs> fourth most talented wide receiver for the Cardinals. Here's how I see decision-making fantasy-wise for the Arizona Cardinals offense, and this is our hometown team. We watched every minute of that game. We always do. You will have – you had six receivers with three catches, not three targets, three catches. This was Max Williams' best career game mm -hmm. ever. Rondell Moore had a huge game. Christian Kirk had a big fourth down bomb catch. Hopkins started the game on fire. You are going to have a tough time figuring out which explosion is going to happen in this offense. Uh, A.J. Green caught a touchdown. He also had another end zone target this week. Not to say that A.J. Green is a better play than those guys. I don't believe he is. I'd rather be starting Rondell Moore or Christian Kirk moving forward, and Hopkins is at the top of the list. But you now have seen in two straight games, they've gone to – A.J. Green's touchdown came from a screen pass on the goal line. He's had three end zone targets. So one week is going to be Kirk. It'll be more one week. Hopkins is the only one that you can feel 100% confident on. But I would love the manufactured touches for Rondell Moore – and that was what was interesting about this game is you saw more snap counts and then you had seven catches. How would you rank them beyond Hopkins? I I, I'd say I don't disagree with what you're saying that right now we don't you don't know who it's going to be, but that's why the number two for me is Rondale Moore because over the course of the season I don't think that AJ Green can establish himself as the number two go to guy. He got targets because the Vikings started to just clamped down on Hopkins and Hopkins really didn't do anything in the second half. So they had to send the targets elsewhere and Christian Kirk, good player, but I don't think at this point of his career, he's going to elevate to the point where, where Rondell Moore could Is end he up. flex worthy moving forward. Would you flex it's, Rondell Moore? I think you can, it's but still I sketchy. It is. It is still sketchy. I want to highlight that. So uh, Christian Kirk will be my number two because he gets the air yards um, and I and I think he'll be the most consistent. I, I don't have any fault for saying I want to take the shot on Rondell Moore as the two because he has the explosive upside, and if he continues to get more involved in his rookie season, great. But with both A.J. Green and Rondale, you're chasing. You're chasing the touchdown with A.J. Green, and you're chasing the big broken play for, for Rondale. He had a 77-yarder where he was wide open, and that can happen with that kind of speed. Outside of that, he was 6, six for 37. Right. So the little tiny touches, um, and and you're you're chasing the broken play. But it, it's Hopkins, and then um, you know a, a shot at an explosive offense. To, for formation wise, when they have four on the field, you see Christian Kirk and Rondell Moore in the slot. Yes. Uh, 
but when they don't have four on the field, one of those guys is going to run over to the bench and it's not going to be, it's not often AJ green who sees a lot of snaps, even if he's just walking his guy down the field. Right. Carlin Sutton, 12 targets, nine oh, for one fifty nine. Oh brother. We have our answer. Yes. It's not KJ Hamler. And even though Tim Patrick scored, right? Uh, yeah. it's not Tim Patrick. And the, so 12 targets, nine receptions. And a couple of those were like big boy air yard targets that Cortland Sutton almost came down with. So his line could have been even better. If you managed to get Cortland Sutton on your team, if you had the courage to grab him during uh, draft season, the top, <laughs> congratulations. Yeah, the top it looks really good right now. The top 12 wide receivers on the week, there's only one that didn't get a touchdown, and that's Cortland Sutton. That means – the volume is there. His upside is even higher than what we're seeing here without Jerry Judy. Uh, this isn't the Jacksonville effect a little bit? It, it certainly isn't going to hurt to play a, a, a bad defense, but this is a get-right game for a player who needed to get right. He's been, you know, coming off the ACL and hesitant, and I think after this, you know, part of what happens when you come back from an ACL is not all physical. A lot of it's mental. A lot of it's... Uh, believing that that you're good to go and nothing like a game where you just dominate to say yeah I'm ready to just be the player I was prior to the injury like Teddy, well said Teddy Bridgewater's looked good man yeah they're two and all right yeah Teddy Bridgewater had over 300 yards two touchdowns man imagine being in one of the west divisions and actually losing a game <laughs> um Mr. Moore, you said that part of the recovery is mental. How how has your mental recovery been for foosball with the rib injury? Oh, I'm I'm back mentally. I, back? Yeah, I'm mentally. I, I believe hesitant? in myself. No hesitation. I'm with ready your three to go. guy, full power. You're... Yeah, full power. Uh, not gonna not gonna hesitate. It's more my my defender two man line that okay. was bearing yeah. the brunt. But um, Hollywood Brown, ten targets, six for one, thirteen and one. Mike, you said you wanted to talk about him. Yeah, because he's this is now another this. Back-to-back -back games to start the season for Hollywood Brown where it, it's been very solid. Week one was 6 for 69 with a score. Nice. But also go back to the way that last season ended. He Holly, was, Hollywood started to really show up. You know, those final the, – the final six, six weeks, he finished as at least a top 36 wide receiver with three performances inside the top 24. We were – Hollywood Brown is one of one of the harder – players like it, when you went all in on him last year because it seemed like the breakout would happen should happen and it didn't until the second half of the season and I think you just got to you know count your lumps here and say a year too early on Hollywood Brown but this he looks like the truth right now the last six weeks of last year he was the wide receiver 11 through you know that right. month and a half of the year and now you start off Looking hot, and and uh, he's a talented wide receiver, first round guy who's look good. But you Unsolved don't have mystery equation here, sure, and and you don't have Rashad uh, Bateman, and, you, and who's coming back soon. And you face two explosive offenses in the first two weeks, which is not what you expected the Baltimore game plan to be, right? You have you faced Kansas City, and then you had the Raiders beat you in a high scoring game, so. I, he's an unsolved mystery still, but he's looked outstanding. Right, so like this coming week will be a, a good answer. It's the Detroit Lions, yes. so they should be dominating the game. Is he part of the reason they dominate? Correct. Because it's an easy defense, or is it they run the ball so much that, the uh, again, the pie for passing is small there? Uh, it'll be a really telling uh, performance this week. Henry Ruggs went five for 113 and a touchdown, and I'm going to leave it there. We're going to talk about him on Smoke Fire tomorrow. Okay. I feel like every single name I bring up, we could talk 20 minutes on, to be honest with yeah. you. Mike Williams, 10 targets for seven catches, 91 yards and a touchdown. Your um, start of the week? Yeah. Mike Williams looked outstanding. He had so many targets that were making Keenan Allen truthers like Mike frustrated because every time he wanted Keenan Wait. to get the ball. But Keenan was still good. He was. Um, people freaking out about Justin Herbert, by the way. Uh, I get it. Brandon Cooks, 14 targets, 9 for 78 and a touchdown. Oh, man. Doesn't matter who his quarterback is. And the breakout, it's happening. DJ Moore, 11 targets, 8 for 79 and a touchdown. Finished at wide receiver 12. A touchdown. You can do it, DJ. Yes, he can. He's like, what is this paint on the ground? <laughs> what is all Does this, this paint? Come off on my shoes? Where Ooh. am I? <laughs> oh, my goodness. We, I thought Julio got over the touchdown hump, but a uh, a heel rule. 
Oh, goodness gracious. That please, Mike was a don't. huge fan of. Please don't. The uh, toe, then heel, out of bounds, toe t- only, inbounds. I will tilt out of this world if I have to <laughs> rant about that. Kelsey, 7 for 109. He's good. Gronkowski. Oh, gronk, 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 Gronk. So, funny game. 4 for 39 and 2. You can keep playing Gronk. He's mm-hmm. um, he's really good. He's good at finding space. He looks like he's got square wheels, like if he was a chariot. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, kuklunk, kuklunk, yeah, exactly. Kuklunk. But it kuklunk, kuklunk, yeah. kuklunk. But it don't matter. He's big. He's strong, and he's got a mind meld with Tom Brady. Yeah. Dosaki, seven targets, seven catches, ninety-four yards. Max Williams, starting tight end for the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, okay. Don't yeah. care. Noah Fant, six targets, four for thirty-three and a touchdown. Do care. Glad he got in the end zone. Mm-hmm. Uh, a goom. I almost said a goomba wale again. A guaybanam. A guaybanam. Uh. He gets involved a little bit, too. Shall we move on to less Mm -hmm. exciting names? Pooped in his big boy pants. Oh, I'm glad that segment is back this year. Crap Prescott. Yeah, I mean. I mean, what's the unsolved mystery here with Dak? I mean, yeah, the, the week one was unbelievable. Week two, is this the Chargers defense? Is this Dak? confidence is this I'm throwing no Michael it out. Gallup I'm throwing it out yeah, which one I, the first week or the second week second week I I, I would rather I would rather throw out <laughs> this week but I, I also think that's the throw more, both out the more likely outcome in the sense that they had two rushing touchdowns um they were able to move and 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 this game you know we expected a barn burner yeah. obviously uh, Mike and I we took a lot of these players in our DraftKings lineup um because we expected a, a lot of points some of the things just the, didn't fall right uh, in the timing of that game and, and touchdowns were rushed in and the the score stayed low. I, I don't expect this to be the norm. So I, I'm with Mike. I, I throw this game out. I I mean, are you going to not start Dak Prescott no, next no. week? No. You're going to play him. He's got elite weapons everywhere. Joe Burrow, 19 for 30, 207 and 2. At one point, he threw interceptions on three straight throws. Gross. Which is something I have done. You know, our flag football league, and it doesn't feel great. Uh, Jameis Winston, this was disgusting. I mean, this uh, the Saints were the worst offensive team in football by every possible analytic you could discover. You probably had to make new ones to describe how atrocious they were. He threw for 111 yards, two interceptions. They were, I mean, Bruce Arians remembers interceptions like these. No touchdowns and has New England on the road next week. Uh, nope. Well, let's talk about his teammate because that's, yeah, that's the real question. That's the concerning part. New England on the road next week. Alvin Kamara finished the game with 30 total yards. Eight carries, five yards. Woof. Four for 25 through the air. I mean, Mike, if you're throwing out the Dak game, are you throwing out this Carolina game? Uh, After they put up 38 against the Packers? I will not throw it completely out. I will... Scoot it to the side, though. I mean, I'm, I'm still going to believe in Alvin Kamara, but to know that this is in the range of outcomes for this New Orleans offense, that is <laughs> that, well that's said. terrifying. Yeah, to know that this could happen. Yes. Gross. And and New England picked off uh, Zach Wilson four times this past weekend. They're at home, so the Saints have to go on the road. And it's not you can't not play Alvin Kamara. No, and, and you shouldn't. Uh, sit Alvin Kamara he should be fine he's difficult to tackle he had a bad week players have bad games and uh, honestly if Alvin Kamara has a bad game what in the world can the Saints do like he is their offense right. so when he saw do you trade for him? sure sure absolutely yes. I would trade for Alvin Kamara so buy low on Kamara right now from some frustrated manager Joe um, Mixon yeah. 20 for 69 uh so yeah I mean still it, saw the volume it's tough to put him as a full poop. No, he would be someone that just um, a turtle head. Yeah. Oh, I mean, oh. <laughs> tw- twenty-one total Gross. touches is is enough to get it done. He didn't. His destroy drawers your smell, team. but they're not filled. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jonathan Taylor, fifteen for fifty-one, no touchdowns, only one target. That's the part that you know. Last week, him and Naeem Hines got a ton of targets. They couldn't run in this game against the Rams. Not surprising. Tennessee next week. Wait, did P- Pittman didn't make the studs list? Oh, he should have. He's oh. not a running back. 
No, no, but we are, we're already I mean, You're skipping ahead? No, no, no the we studs. Finished the studs. We finished oh, the studs. I'm saying oh, Michael oh, Pittman oh. and his 120-plus yard outing? That wasn't enough? He, he didn't get a bad. touchdown. That's you know? not enough for you, Brooks? It was great for him, but he didn't stack up against other wide receivers as high because he didn't finish with Goodness as many gracious. fantasy points. You people Paris are impossible. Paris Campbell missed this game. Yes. Pittman took advantage. He looked good. What do you do there, though, with the quarterback situation? With the quarterback situation, that really sucks. Uh, hopefully, you say it's the pits. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, the the Taylor Heineke to uh, uh, Terry McLaurin can be the model, and we can have some hope here that that Jacob Eason will say, "Oh, yeah, Michael Pittman is my number one guy." It just it is worth highlighting because, like the the opposite of seeing Alvin Kamara going, "Oh, well, this can happen." That, see, that can happen. Seeing the realization it, like, happen on the field of, yes, Michael Pittman is the guy who I thought he could be at least one week, where, where most players can't ever do that. So Yeah, you just they need to give him work. So knowing that that's, that's possible for him, very excited to watch the rest of the season unfold for Michael Pittman. Naeem Hines is doing his best recreation of 2020. He's <laughs> After week one and being great, one carry, one catch. <laughs> just, what are the... How is this possible? People probably play Frank. Frank, you old scallywag. He is a rap scallion. And then MEH for the Chiefs. Yes. Uh, Clyde Edwards Alaire. Oh, man. 12 for 46, no touchdowns. Lost the uh, one goal line carry to Daryl, who had three for negative two for one. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Somehow negative. he has a rushing touchdown and finished with negative yards. Yeah. For and Clyde. Fumble for Clyde, obviously. No targets in the game at all. That's where this is like. This is very alarming now. Of you would hope we like week one we could call it an anomaly and let's get Clyde in the involved in the passing game, but this it sucks for fantasy and it doesn't make sense. If you are the Kansas City Chiefs and you are drafting a running back in the first round, where Jonathan Taylor is there, DeAndre Swift, you have better natural runners. Than Clyde Edwards Alaire. You draft him because his calling card is he is a top notch pass catching running back. And this is how you utilize him in the offense? This makes absolutely no sense. But we are, my DEF CON level has finally officially gone up here for Clyde. Would you be trading Clyde? Trading for Clyde? Because right now, I don't, I don't imagine. Like, if you trade for Clyde, I would imagine you can get him on cheap. So that means if you're trading him away... I'm willing to trade for him because he's still the starting running back. Like, all the reasons we've laid out why he should be good. But we're like we're to the point now in our... I have him in our Dynasty League. It's a double flex. Two running back, double flex. Clyde might end up on my bench, and I'm going to be playing some of these other wide receivers I have over him, which feels Clyde, insane. Clyde can't make a big play. Yes, That's he doesn't the, have the speed. That was the whole reason I didn't like him is because he's not going to touch the ball. Like when Kareem Hunt was there, you didn't have to focal point Kareem Hunt. He gets What does Kareem Hunt do? He gets half the work in Cleveland mm -hmm. and can make a big play and be fantasy relevant in any moment. Unfortunately, I think when you, when you ask, if you want an answer to the question why he pounded the table for Clyde, is because this was a Super Bowl winning team that wanted to bring in a ironically. I mean, this is just a stupid time to say it. He's a he's a running back who legitimately never fumbles. He didn't fumble one time his rookie season. He never fumbled at LSU. So you no mistakes. Amazing pass blocker, right? He can come in and, and at least help out in that in that regard and be solid. You didn't need to bring in a focal point because Patrick's the focal point. So um I think the I think the hope here is somehow what happened to David Montgomery. You know, David Montgomery coming in sure. as a rookie was super disappointing. And you would say the same thing. Can't make a big play. You know, he was a four six three guy. Clyde's a four six guy. Like never never made big plays. And then somehow it clicked and, and a it year came, and a half in. Yeah, a year and a half in, it clicked and it came through. That's that's the hope. You have to hope something changes here in Clyde. Um, 27 for 89 on the year. He's down from 4.4 last year on the ground to 3.3 this year on the ground. Three targets, three receptions in two games. Incredibly disappointing. Uh, moving forward, though, Miles Sanders, 13 it's for 55 against San Francisco. 55. Eli Mitchell, 
17 for 42. I mean, I would take some solace in the 17. Before Trey Sermon got his first, I mean, it was second half, right? Mm -hmm. So Eli was the guy. Now he wasn't great. That's I, I, for sure. The whole offense could not run, but I, I take solace in 17. I think if memory serves me, Elijah got injured before Trey. Yes. Like Trey came out because Elijah got banged up. 17 carries is amazing. Um, it seems like the Philadelphia Eagles defensive line is maybe a little bit better yeah, than the, we the Eagles played this game pretty tough. Like there was, I had messaged you guys. I said, I know we're early We're we're only one quarter into this game, but if, if Garoppolo keeps playing this way, it's going to be Trey Lance season next week. And then uh, Garoppolo picked it up and they ended up getting the W, but, uh, this was, this was a rough game for San Francisco, which Maybe the Eagles are actually solid. The two defenses that have been the most impressive, like Philly, they shut down Atlanta, and Atlanta yeah. kind of came back this week offensively. And then uh, the Buffalo defense for two straight weeks, mind you, Tua got hurt, but they've been – no one's doing anything against them. Pittsburgh did nothing against them, and now Miami. Right. Miles Gaskin was a huge fart this week. <laughs> Five for 25, four for 21 through the air. Oh, man. Um. You know, swinging a miss with Miles so far. And uh, they have Las Vegas next week. Maybe with a quarterback, maybe with that one. Kareem Hunt, okay, not yeah, great. 13 or, Yeah, James Robinson, 11 for 47. Where, where are you guys now? Because I, I was out. I was OUT on Robinson before the season. Uh, how are you guys feeling now? 73% of the snaps, like he was the guy. 14 opportunities, not the worst. Where he, where are you at for fantasy? He is where I said he was to me at the end of last week after rewatching the game. A low-end RB2, and I think that's where he will live. He finishes the running back 30 this week. Not good. He didn't do enough with it. Obviously, he's in the pooped in his big boy pants segment, but he was on the field the most. He clearly looked better. We saw a couple of Hyde plays. Hyde only had two carries. So yeah. They, that, that would be your... Exactly, and, and, and he looked good. The problem is this offense... Um, I apologize. This team uh, just sucks right now. And I would expect, even though uh, for all the um, mismanagement of Urban Meyer and our disdain towards him, I still think that Trevor Lawrence will get better as the season goes on. Right? Certainly. He's, he's a rookie figuring it out. I would expect the second half of the year he's better than the first half. And if that's the case, if the offense picks it up, I think he can be a flex worthy option going forward and and Denver is a is a good defense. You know, it's always scary whether it's James Robinson or I guess, you know, Marvin Jones. It's always scary to kind of you know, try to grab the nicest fruit on the bad tree, mm -hmm. you know. Uh Melvin Gordon, Javante Williams, uh 13 carries a piece. And uh Javante was better with him, 13 for 64, Gordon was 13 for 31. Gordon had two targets, two for 38, one target again for Javante, one for 10. The inability that Denver is having right now running the ball. They just can't run at all. Is very strange with like how well Teddy's playing, how well the wide receivers are doing. I don't know, it's, yeah, it's something like You want to be excited about the fact that they play Jacksonville this yeah. coming week, but they just – It's weird. Or they play the Jets, but they just played Jacksonville and didn't do anything. I'm going to read you some wide receiver poop poopers, and you tell me if you're worried. Tyreek, no. Nope. Amari Cooper, no. Nope. Nope. AJ Brown had nine targets, three for forty-three. Not, no, no. He dropped at goodness. least four easy catches, and he had drop problems last year. I think he he had a tweet that went viral talking about how his family told him yes. that he couldn't even catch COVID oh, if he tried. Brutal. Um, yeah, no concern not, there not, with him. Not concerned. Nine targets, and he's awesome. Antonio Brown, no, because nope. he'll be. This is what you should expect if you were riding high off a of week one, and you should have been thinking that Antonio was just I still think Brown's going to be more regular than the other two sure that that would be my only I still think you could I would flex put him, him but he's more regular than I him. would I would definitely have him in third place needs more total uh DK Metcalf 11 targets no. against Tennessee how is this a bad game Robert Woods nine targets oh. five for 64 that's not a pooper he's not a pooper but he's concerned I'm a little concerned I am concerned about Robert Woods I've got him a couple places this is Cooper Cup's offense. Until, like, until somebody watches the tape like we do. Right. And then you get the game where it's him. 
<laughs> with yeah, Robert it'll, Woods. It, it'll certainly shift over and it'll, it'll go back and forth a little bit. But I going into this year, you kind of expect Robert Woods to be the go to the, breakfast, Robert, the one in targets <laughs> and not so much anymore. Gross. You, Wait, is that true, Brooks? Robert Woods has back to back wide receiver 42 finishes. Yes, sir. Five for 64 doesn't sound so bad till you say wide receiver 42. Uh, Corey Davis. Not concerned. A great trade for target. Here's why. The New England Patriots. They take away your number one option against a rookie. Uh, I mean, we should have we should have seen it coming. Um, I th I think Corey Davis is will be fine. Uh, <clears throat> DJ Chark, one for 19. <laughs> no player got me more crap on social media last week than... Me saying that I, I literally said, I just want to see what happens for a couple more weeks before believing that DJ Chark is the guaranteed number one. So let's, I'm still in that boat, by the way. This is not a declaration of victory, just the declaration of let's see what happens for the next two weeks. I, if, if, if Chenault is going to miss some time, right? then both DJ Chark and Marvin Jones are far more interesting. Robbie Anderson, six targets, three for 38. Do uh, I do I hit the alarm button here? It's concerning. We told you last week to trade him away after his his touchdown one catch week. You know, McCaffrey's going to get a ton. Yep. Moore is going to get a ton. Dan Arnold was very relevant this week by the way. Um I don't have a stat line right in front of me, but it was uh let me see if I can find that I'll here. I'll pull it up. Pull pull that up for me. He had some catches. Uh, uh 3 4 55. Oh, baby. That's what Dan Arnold does. 55! So, uh, you know, Robbie is still... Robbie has a lot of name value. That's what I will say. Like, in a, in a league, Robbie's name still means a lot. So, if you... You might be able to get better than... Like, you might... Can you get Mike Williams for Robbie Anderson? No, no way. No, I doubt it. No Maybe way. last week you could have. Yep. There's no way. But you could probably go, you know... Uh, Robbie plus something for Mike Williams. Yeah. It, Robbie, Robbie is. So are you out on Robbie? Now? I'm not out on Robbie. I think he's someone you can flex. Are you every in week. on Robbie? Uh, I think Robbie Anderson is kind of that that wide receiver three. Where the nice thing about Robbie is he has big play potential. So you throw him in your lineup. You know, we talked about you could start Rondell Moore, or AJ Green, and take a piece of the. I would start Robbie over those two guys because. Would you take Robbie over Rondell rest of the season? Yes. I'm doing the hokey pokey. Turn yourself around? No, no. I'm going put your right foot in, put your right foot out. Oh, with Robbie? Yep. So you're unhelpful advice. I, I'm just <laughs> telling people what I'm doing. Callaway should hit your waiver wire. Marquez yes. Callaway. Yep. Uh, tight ends. Are you concerned with George Kittle? Ran the most routes on the team, but just four for 17. People are scratching their heads going, but I paid up for a tight end. It's Debo, very, Debo had eight targets. It is very head scratching. One more week. Yeah, yeah, for before you panic. Before I worry. Okay. Bad game for Tyler Higby. One target, yeah. one catch uh, in Tampa Bay next week. 27 routes run, only five fewer than Cup. Just didn't get the targets. Cup is the guy, man. Like, the three wide receivers were out there a ton as well. Woods and uh, Van Jefferson. Matthew Stafford loves Cooper Cup. They weren't lying on that broadcast. Dallas Goddard, two for 24. Johnny Smith, four for 28. Jared Cook, three for 28. Cole Komet, ah. uh, Komet the bench, one for zero. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, man. What happened? Um, well, Dalton got, Dalton got hurt. Yeah. I, <laughs> Dalton got hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Dalton got hurt. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. I think that's going to wrap it up. We want to thank Pristine Auction. Uh, we didn't mention him today, but we could have. Debo Samuel had a nice week again. 55 bucks for a... <laughs> Signed jersey over at Pristine Auction. That auction ends on Tuesday night, so check it out. Use the code BALLERS to get a $10 credit. Waiver show tomorrow. Unsolved Mysteries on Wednesday. And we'll find out if Mike is still with us on this earth. Please, Jamal. Please. Jamal Williams, hold oh. your fate in his hands. Get him. Get Jamal. The ball. I Thank you, you for Goodbye. listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.
And this episode of the show was brought to you by Omaha Steaks. Go to omahasteaks.com and use the code FOOTBALLERS in the search bar. For a limited time, you'll save 50% when you order the deluxe grill-out assortment. Plus, get 12 free Omaha Steaks burgers and enjoy the last cookout of the summer. That's omahasteaks.com, keyword FOOTBALLERS.